basically, I think I started building my first guitars when I needed something to do, like for my spare time. I mean, I mean, I always played guitar um, as a kid, and uh, what I would do is I would just change them. Uh, I would alter them. I'd like to break parts or whatever like this and, you know, fix them. I was into this uh, uh, Pete Townsend kind of thing, heavy rock and roll. So when I got tired of a guitar, I'd smash it and then I'd try to, you know, rebuild it or whatever like that. But one day I got the bright idea to, like, build a whole guitar pretty much by myself. And I was a kid living in New York City and I uh, decided to go find a, some wood shop. That's where my interest started, but you know, I mean, I realized that there's a lot more to, uh, you know, building a playable guitar. After doing all these refins, uh, after a couple of years, um, I started building some uh, some tele Telecaster style guitars, and you know because I couldn't afford a, a '50s Tele, which is what I really wanted. One day I was looking at the internet, I saw this green Telecaster, it's like a 1955 Tele, and it looks so gorgeous. I, I thought, man, I love that guitar. I mean, I gotta find out more about that picture that I saw. first actual Rebel Relic guitar that I ever built, um, I thought of the name Rebel Relic, told my webmaster, uh, she thought it was a badass name, didn't like it at all. But uh, I, this guy ordered this one Rebel Relic and um, never picked it up because apparently it died. I had a construction business at the time, so I was doing a spare time. Um, building Rebel Relic guitars, you know, I got the decals and I got, the, and I was selling them on eBay and everything was going, uh, you know, pretty hunky-dory, it was a part-time thing. And uh, at a certain point I thought, well, let me just see, make a date, you know, where I'll stop construction work as a, as a builder, as, an, as a small contractor, and then I would uh, start building Rebel Relics full-time. When I first decided to have a shop, or not just a workshop, but a, like a showroom, a guitar shop, I already knew what I wanted. I mean, I, I knew, uh, let's say, feng shui-wise, how I wanted the layout, what was gonna work for me. So the moment I walked into this place, I already had the floor plan. But as far as the, the decor and the design, as far as the atmosphere, um, you know, I like New Orleans, you know, cabins, uh, some old juke joint kind of atmosphere. I mean, there's a few places where I've walked into in my life where, you know, some old shop, some old mom and pop shop way out in the backwoods or whatever. And you go in there and you f see all these little details, all these little things where you just, 
think what's that and oh what's that under there and over there you know not like a like uh some squirrel or whatever uh squirrel house but um just interesting little details <laughs> things to be that age well uh you know hopefully like people do you know just just you know wrinkles and you know getting older and the crotchety crankety uh whatever is is character to me so uh, i like bricks and concrete and honest material and steel you know rust that kind of thing <laughs> talking to a, a, f a freak, a vintage freak, you know. I love everything that's old. That's what it comes down to, um, old stuff. It came a time where I just couldn't just build the guitars on my own and um, anymore, you know, not in a, in a small production. So, you know, I was on a long, hard search to find somebody to help me out. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Virgo. I'm, my name is Luke. I'm a Virgo. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm the kind of person that, you know, wait for a bus. I've got my change counting out and ready, you know. Um, so I like, you know, I know how I want things done. And I know it's difficult to work for me. Because I know exactly how, how what I want, what the end result has to be. And I don't miss those days, you know, uh, working by myself. You know, there's a few things that are important curriculums to me, which is you gotta like vintage stuff. Um, you gotta know how to play guitar. Uh, you have to be in love with, uh, you know, 50s and 60s music. <laughs> And that's just the beginning. I mean, you have to know how to work with power tools. You gotta, you have to have it in your fingers, you know. And the most important thing is you gotta love what you do. And you wouldn't believe how hard it is to find somebody to help you do that kind of stuff. I mean, uh, and not uh, be afraid to get your hands dirty. the guitars have such a good vibe I and mean, why do they have this this chime to it and I say well the only ingredient that I can think of is just love that's the ink that's a special ingredient that I put into the guitar and uh, it gives back because uh, you know uh, that's the only thing I can think of I really believe that you know if you pick up something anything you know where somebody built it and they have a positive energy about it or, or love in it you i think you anybody not even the most you know insensitive person should be able to pick that up on some level you can feel the difference you pick a factory guitar up and you pick up a handmade guitar you know and you don't have to pick it up, you can see them by the way. Well, one, tone, no, one, vitality, two, tone, and uh, vitality, tone, vitality. That should cover it. Mm -hmm. 